Hello, and I have often promised you that what I like to do with Please Note is to introduce you to some remarkable people of faith, some remarkable Christians, and some incredible people. And I happened to run into one today. He was kind enough to come by with his wife. And Santa Claus, welcome to Please Note. Thank you, and it's good to be here. And Mrs. Claus is with you. Yes, she is. Miss Claus, the only time that Miss Claus lets me go out by myself, Christmas Eve. Now, it just is fascinating because Santa Claus um, actually is the senior warden at St. John's in Henderson. That's right. Which could make you a very popular church. Yes, sir. I hope so. We need to help. <laughs> well, well, Santa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I've been doing this for 11 years. Uh -huh. um, uh, it's something that uh, Mrs. Claus taught me into doing. Uh -huh. uh, and once I started, it, the understanding was that if I did this, I grew my own beard. That no you no did. fake beard. Yeah. And she's good with that, and she has been good with it for this is our going on our 11th year. What are some of the places you go? Well, we, we do a lot of home visits. Uh -huh. We do a lot of churches. We do a lot of uh, breakfast with Santa's. Um, we do uh, country club. We do. Uh, we have a photographer in Henderson that we do photo shoots with. I love it. It is one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done. Wow. It really is. That to, to see the look on a child's face when they first see you, you know, yeah. it's that, <gasps> that deer, I call it the deer in the headlight look, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and we do home visits and we have done this. Uh, the parents will leave presents on the front porch, and I have a big red bag, Santa bag, uh -huh. and I'll knock on the door, and they'll let one of the children open it. And when they open the door, they go, <gasps> oh, yeah. and sometimes it takes them several minutes, five minutes or so, before they ever can talk to you. Now, they'll walk around and look at you, uh -huh. but it takes them a while before they get the breath back to be able to talk to Santa. And I have found out that all most children want to do is they want to talk. They want to touch you. They want to pull your beard. They feel your fur. Yeah. They want to talk to Santa. You know, wow. Truly. What are some of the things the children tell you? Well, I'm, I'm tell you, I, <laughs> I found out earlier, a fat man with a beard and a red suit, <laughs> yeah. there are no family secrets. <laughs> oh, right. So, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, be careful of what you tell a child or let a child hear. Can they tell it all? They will throw you under the bus in a heart. <laughs> I've got this story that this young girl, now people say children don't remember from year to year. I was doing, this lady would had a uh, vendor's party at her house, and I was invited, so I was there. This young girl, three years old now, all right, when she was two, this had happened. She came and she sat on my knee, had her list, and she says, uh, where's Rudolph? And I told her he was at home, and she wanted to know what I was feeding him. I told her we were feeding him oats and barley and corn and high protein flying food. And she oh, was telling me, you know, oh yeah. And she was telling me that he didn't eat everything that she left him. So I told her, I said, well, he eats a little bit at your house and the next house on down the road. And then she turned and got serious. And she looked me in the eye and she said, well, you ate all the cookies I left you, but you drank my daddy's beer. His beer? Her beer, his beer. <laughs> Her mom was standing behind her, and the old lady, you could see her shrinking. I mean, she was just, she wanted to get under that rug, some kind of bad. I never missed a beat, and I said, well, I said, you know, I don't usually do this. I said, but Santa was still thirsty. And I said, I didn't think you would mind, your dad would mind if I drank one beer. Uh-uh, my daddy said, you drank the whole six-pack. <laughs> Her, her mama and, and her mama just left. I mean, she left the room. She did not want to be around her. But I, but it kind of smoothed it over. And I told her, I said, "Well, I tell you what I'm gonna do." I said, "This year, I said, rather than a six pack, I will bring you your dad a case of beer to make up." I said, "Would that be okay?" She said, "Well, I'm sure it will, Santa." She said, "But don't be drinking his beer anymore." I said, "I promise, I won't do that." That's an image of Santa Claus but, I never but, thought I would ever know. I, I didn't either. I mean, you know, if I, I mean, it shocked me, you know, because she just come out and she said, well, you drank my daddy's beer. I mean, what is Santa Claus supposed to say, you know? But, you, you know, you, you learn to recover, and children, when they ask you a question, you've got to have an answer. Don't hesitate, but you've got to be believable, you know, so, you know, it's, it, over the years, I have developed a, 
a little routine with them. They're going to want to know where Rudolph is, what he's doing, how he get, how I get down in the house, whether it's through the chimney or the front door, how do I get in the front door if it's locked. Mm -hmm. And so, and I tell them, I said, well, if you don't have a chimney, I come through the front door. Well, my daddy locks the door. I said, yeah, but I have a key. <laughs> how do you have a key to our house? I said, I have a key to fit all houses. Mm -hmm. I said, because I've got to come in and bring your presence. And they, and they are satisfied with that. Yeah, yeah. But it calls it, it's a reasonable answer, uh -huh. you know. Sure. And that's what you have to do. Very reasonable. Oh, yeah, it is. That makes sense. One thing you don't want to do, don't tell them something you can't back up. Because they will catch you. <laughs> they'll, they'll figure it they'll out. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out, and they'll catch you. Well, how do you how do you deal with both the, the theology and the mythology and all that? How do you well, I, I think... I think the way I was raised, I was, I was born and raised in the Episcopal Church. Uh -huh. I've been a, a Episcopalian all my life. And um, I, I grew up with this, yeah. you know. And at our Christmas time, our Christmas Eve services, you know, we always had them at 11. And uh, when I was small, I used to ask, you know, well, Mama, am I going to be home in time for Santa? And I was always told, Sugar, Santa knows when you are home, you will be okay. Mm -hmm. But the... The theology of it is that something that I, I love. Yeah, I, I love the story of Christmas, and and the things that have come along, such as the you know the the, the you heard it the night before Christmas. Oh, yeah. Originally, it was a visit from Saint Nick. Right. The story. Right. Now, how it got to be the night before Christmas, I don't know where they changed it along the line, but it's the same story. It's the Episcopalian who wrote it. But I, the yeah. night before Christmas. Oh yeah, no. and, and it's a great story, and I am asked to read that. At least 25 times. Are you really? Yeah. Almost everywhere we go, if a home visit is there, or especially if it's a church visit, they want to know either you read the, the Luke version or you read the night before Christmas. Mm. Most of the time they want the Bible version. Yeah. You know, and, and I love it. I almost know it by heart. I have heard over the years that, and I don't know how true this is, but there's several versions, you know, uh, there was a, I was told there was a St. Nicholas, I think he was started either in Turkey or Germany. That's right, Turkey, yeah. And um, about the, you know, the dowry and all Nicholas, that stuff. Right. And St. Nicholas in Germany, you know, he gave gifts to the children. Right. And it evolved from the Magi bringing the gifts to the baby Jesus. Uh -huh. Now, you know, right. I, that, that's what I like to believe, you know. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not about Santa, the baby Jesus. It's about Jesus, you know. Yes, sir. But Santa is a sideline for Jesus, and that and you express a deep love of humanity, of people. Yes. You express the joy of giving. You know, the Magi brings the gifts to the three yeah. gifts, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, to yeah. baby Jesus. And it has evolved over the years to where at Christmas time, the joy of giving. You know, you, you give from the heart. You don't give from the pocketbook, or you don't give this gift because they're going to give you a gift, or you expect a gift. You give because you love that person, mm -hmm. or you love the feeling of, you know, there's nothing that makes a person happy, especially me and my family, mm -hmm. is to be able to give. Right. And, you know, sometimes you ask, you know, well, why do you give that person money when you know he, I said, I don't know what he's going to do with it, but I know what I do when I give it. I give it mm -hmm. to him. Now, what he does with it or she does with it, that's when right. I give it, that's up to right. them. Hopefully, they'll spend it for food or whatever they need. But it's the joy of giving, mm -hmm. you know. You've got to, at Christmas time, you're going to meet a few Scrooges. You know that. They're around. I, I mean, they, they're around. I mean, you know, you can't get away from all of them. But I have found that over the years that when Christmas time comes, and usually it's around Thanksgiving. <laughs> No matter what the stores say, but it's around Thanksgiving when people start getting into that feeling of Christmas, you know, of Christ, yeah. you know, and attending church. And, you know, you go to that Advent, to me, uh, I love all my seasons in the church, but Advent seems to be special, yeah. you know. It's about the birth of Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. how the Lord gave him to the world. Yeah. Uh, and it's just something that... Uh, I really look forward to it, you know. And of course, commercialism, you know, um, 
you know, it's not about Walmart or Target or, or right. people, you know, stores like that and things like that. And it's not about the commercial, you know, you got to have this and things like that. But uh, it, when people really look deep down, deep down, mm -hmm. in their heart, it's, it's all about Jesus, you know. And that's what I, I like to think that maybe somewhere I know he wore royal purple, mm -hmm. you know, the sign of Jesus. But I like to think that maybe there was a red cloth in the house somewhere along the way. I'm sure there you was. Know? <laughs> and, but it's, it, you know, it's just for, personally for me. It's a, I, I get a, I get. I don't know who gets more fun, me or the children. Either it, way, it brings joy into the world. I try. I really do. And, and when it, joy comes into the world, Santa, Christmas happens all over. All year long. So would you tell everybody Merry Christmas? Ho ho ho! <laughs> Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Santa, God bless you. Thank you, sir. And God bless you, and keep the faith, and Merry Christmas. To all. <laughs>